What's up everybody, Parker here. I have a very fun video today on how to set a dynamic reference line on your x-axis. I see this being asked around a lot and the idea is that in case you have a line chart, you wanna be able to set a vertical reference line somewhere on the x-axis. So you see as I change this slicer, you see how that reference line is moving dynamically. Uh, you can either set this up statically without a slicer or you can set it up with the same configuration uh, to show a dynamic reference line or you can even show multiple reference line uh, reference lines depending on your data. Uh, this might be useful in case you have uh, maybe a couple periods in your data and you want to be able to separate those periods. So for example, let's say on July 31st, 2018, uh, my YouTube channel hit a new milestone. So I want to be able to separate everything before July 31st and everything after July 31st, 2018. Uh, so just for some context, you are looking at my YouTube views data. So this is my uh, daily views data. So let's go ahead and dive into the demo on how you would set this up. So I have another file here just with the actual line chart. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is instead of using a raw line chart, go ahead and change this to a combo chart, but let's do the line and clustered column chart. Uh, because the secret to this is that the reference line is actually going to be a bar. It's gonna be the bar uh, portion of this line and uh, clustered column chart. So the second step that you're gonna to wanna to follow is you're gonna to wanna to set up a new date table. It doesn't wanna be the actual column that you're using for the date in this x-axis. You wanna set up a new table. So I'm gonna to go to new table and I'm gonna call this date. And I am gonna use the calendar function. Oh, that's calculate table. I'm gonna use the calendar function. Uh, my start date, I know my first days of data was uh, 2018, uh, February 3rd, and then I'm gonna create that table until today. So we're creating this calculated table. We can see that, uh, we can look at our date and we can see all the way from uh, February 3rd, 2018 until, uh, until today, which is August 7th. Uh, so let's go ahead and change the formatting real quick and we will change that uh, to not show time. And then hop on back over to the report canvas. Um, so now what we wanna do is we wanna create a slicer and we're gonna throw in our new date column into that slicer. And this won't do anything as of now. It'll only allow us to change this field uh, that doesn't really do anything. Uh, and we're also gonna change this to before instead of between. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. What this is effectively doing is it's allowing us to only select a single date instead of being able to change the, the first date. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit later. Uh, so the next thing you need to do is you need to create a new measure. I'm gonna call this reference line. And I'm gonna set this equal to, let's just say a random number, I'll set it equal to seven. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag that new measure into uh, the column values. So we'll drag it into the column values and we see that it has a value of seven here on the bottom. Uh, but specifically for this line in uh, clustered column chart, we have the Y axis set to where um, show secondary is off if this were on, which it is by default, you see we'll have two Y axes. You see our reference line has its own axis on the left and our views has its own axis on the right. So this isn't necessarily what we want, but we're gonna leave it on for just a second. Um, so we can change this uh, functionality to only show the reference line for the date we have selected. Uh, so we're gonna use a basic if statement and we're gonna say if the max of our day column which if we take a look at our values in this line chart, so let me go ahead and just return this back to seven, got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, we can see that our, uh, our day column is what is driving the x-axis. So our day column is what we're gonna use to reference here. So if our max of our day column equals the max of our slicer up top, which was coming from the new date table we created. Then we return that same seven. Also let's return blank and click okay. And we see now we have a single bar. So depending on the max value we select in our uh, date slicer, so right now it is November 26, 2018, we are only gonna show one bar. It's still equaling seven, but as we change that bar, we can see how it changes dynamically to show that single reference line. 
Uh, so that's pretty cool stuff there. The only other touch that we're going to add is going to get rid of uh, this secondary line or the secondary axis. And instead, we're going to show basically let's we'll show a line that goes up until the maximum value for our entire period so that it blends in and that we can get rid of the secondary y axis. So in order to do that, we're going to add a little bit of code. Uh, we're going to create a virtual table. So we're going to call this virtual. I've shown this method on my channel multiple times, but we'll walk through it again. Uh, we're going to set it equal to the summarize function. Summarize is going to take a table input and summarize it down and group it down based on the specified columns. So we're going to take our video stats table. We're going to group by our day column. And then we're going to specify a new column that, can, uh, that we will aggregate data based on this day column. So if we want to set up a new column called views, it'll be equal to the sum of the views column. And that's our summarized table. So if you were to view this, you would see a table with only uh, distinct day values, but the sum of each individual line that falls within that day. So finally, all we need to do is return and instead of the seven, we want to return our uh, max x of our virtual table and the views column. So we are taking the maximum value from our virtual table. And what this is gonna do is it's going to return a bar with the height of, or the value of our maximum value within our date range. So let's go ahead and return. And we see I made one small mistake, as you can see, we see that our uh, reference line is actually showing around 1400, which is actually the value of our, um, of our views that day. So it's actually only taking into account the single day that that line is viewing. Actually, what we need to do is we need to add an all selected here, and that should give us what we want. So this is going to look at the entire selection of our line chart instead of the single day that we are currently iterating over. So now we see that we're actually showing a reference line of somewhere around 4,300, which is the maximum views we have ever had uh, for the channel. So if we were to change this around, we see that that is going to stay static at 4,300. Um, finally, what we want to do is we want to switch off the uh, the secondary y-axis to make everything a little less confusing. So we can come all the way down on the y-axis to uh, show secondary. And now we just have that one single y-axis. So now we can change this around and uh, show this dynamic reference line depending on the date that you want to show. If you want to hard code this in, you can hard code it directly into the measure itself. And you don't need to have this slicer here in case you know that you're your uh, reference line shouldn't ever change dates. So uh, that's pretty much the entire tip. Doesn't take too long to set up. I hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.